So my name is Travis McIntyre and I go by Moke and we're drone racing today. I kind of just stumbled upon drone racing. I'd never been into RC stuff and my friend had one and I played with it a little bit and got myself one and just kind of fell into a hole. I've been flying radio control planes and drones for about six years and I've been racing uh, competitively for almost two years now. I got into drone racing actually when I could no longer ride my motorcycle. Um, I was stuck in bed for medical complications, so a friend told me to go find a hobby. Went to a hobby shop and I found a drone that was like a quarter of the size of this. After a couple months I built one, started racing them, and it's been a new life passion that I cannot put down. When we first started with drones about three years ago, it was mostly drone combat with larger drones in a, like a boxing ring kind of environment. But in the last year or so, drone racing has really come into its own and really has started to dominate the hearts and minds of drone pilots. These are called FPV drones. That stands for first person view. And the way they work is each drone has a camera on board with a video transmitter. That sends the signal wirelessly to FPV goggles. So as a pilot, you wear these goggles and they transmit directly to your eyeballs. So when you have the goggles on, it's like being in the cockpit of this little teeny tiny drone. And you pretty much have the freedom and get to see what a bird sees. And it's kind of the closest thing to just being able to fly around in the sky. Well, one of the cool things about this community is a lot of people design their own equipment. Me and my friend actually spent the last few months designing this little drone, the Twitch 109 from Unique FPV. What's really neat about this, this is the smallest rig at this race, and it's basically won me a spot at Drone Nationals Racing later this year. The racetrack is lit up and the drones are lit up, so it's almost like a sci-fi experience or, or like a Tron race, if you will. We've got 40 of the world's best pilots here, and they're already tearing this track up. It's really exciting. Racing, to a large extent, is all luck. It's not getting ran into, not having your video go out for some stupid reason, not having something break. It's exciting, but once we put the goggles on, we're sitting in the cockpit, and the rest of the world kind of disappears. I compete for fun and the sheer thrill of it, and today I've been doing really good. Uh, for a lot of people, though, they compete for the top place. They like having the thrill of being the number one pilot. Uh, and for a lot of people, they go to these events with friends. So there'll be two or three buddies that fly together all the time. They'll get together, they'll carpool the different races. The pilots that race with ASL are really an interesting mix. The demographic is all over the map. Some people are trying to leave their day jobs and become full-time professional drone racers. And so some of our pilots here today are making that transition. Right now, I guess you could say I'm a semi-professional pilot. I get some money to do some stuff, but right now I have no major sponsors. So it's all me for the most part. For drone racing to be successful as a sport, we need to gather fans and make them really enjoy watching. So by making the track lit up and making the drones light up, I think it makes a better story for all the spectators to watch and follow. A year ago was one of the first events, the Drone Nationals in Sacramento. Since then, there's been drone races every weekend consistently for the last year. And it's only gotten more and more crazy as time has gone on. The industry itself has really nailed down how to best present the drone sports to the audience. And so I see it growing tremendously large. I see it on cable TV, network TV, lots of drone events being streamed. And I see it being a legitimate, viable sport. The drone conversation used to be about camera drones and privacy and all these other issues. But in the last few months, the conversation has really turned away from those sort of politically charged issues. And has really started talking about the fun and the future of how drones can be used for good as a uh, tool in sports and as a toy in sports. 